As with any lifestyle change or physical exercise program, consult your physician before you begin your yoga practice. If you are pregnant, discuss your yoga practice with your yoga instructor. As your pregnancy progresses, you will need to modify or avoid certain poses. Move at your own pace and modify the poses as needed in order to maintain alignment and easy breathing in every pose. If you feel any discomfort, dizziness, or pain during your practice, either modify the pose so that you are comfortable or take a few moments to rest. It is very important that you listen to your body and practice yoga in the manner that is the safest and most comfortable for you. Namaste. Hello, my name is Diane. Welcome to the 60-minute Hatha Yoga Flow. Placing your hands out to the side, sitting tall and straight. Inhaling, bringing the hands up overhead. And exhaling, lowering them back slowly to the ground. Trying to synchronize the breath, deepening. Inhaling all the way up, allowing the breath to drop into the lower abdomen. Exhaling, a gentle squeeze of the tummy to allow the breath to fully escape. Inhale up, relax the shoulders and the neck. Interlock fingers, pressing the palms up, and exhale to horizontal, pressing forward to the palms, releasing the hands, inhaling open, soften the shoulders and the face, exhale, hands returning down to the ground, repeating, inhaling up, two, three, four, interlocking, pressing up, exhaling down, two, three, four, releasing, Opening the heart, the shoulders, nice long neck, exhaling, hands return down to the floor. Inhale up, feel the breath deepening, interlock, pressing up, exhaling, opening the spine, long neck, inhaling to open, palms face the front, and exhaling, hands return down to the ground again gently releasing, hands to knees, sitting with a tall straight spine, make sure you're not lifting your chin, keep your neck long in the back, just breathing deeper and deeper, gently releasing your feet, switching your feet around, always make sure if you get uncomfortable that you rearrange your body and find a more comfortable place to be. Putting the other foot in front to build balance in the hips, the knees, and the ankles. Placing the hand to the knee, the left hand swinging behind you. Fingers point straight back. Inhale to lengthen your spine. Exhale to twist your lower spine, your mid spine, your upper spine. You can press the hand against the knee on the exhales to twist you gently deeper, but not so far that you move beyond your safe limits. Feeling the constriction through the abdominal area, opening the heart, the back, and the ribs. Trying to relax even as your spine lengthens on the inhale. Turn your eyes into the twist as well. Your entire spine is active. Opening back to the front, opening the arms wide. Trying to relax the shoulders, sinking the arms down. Moving into a side stretch. Lifting your left arm up overhead, looking down at the right fingers, walking them out, and gently reaching out through the long arm, pressing down through the left hip. Try not to rock over, breathing into the ribs. Allow your ribs to open up like a big accordion. And don't let your head flop. Keep your neck long, your chin neutral. You can look up if your neck likes that, or straight ahead or down at the floor. Be very careful with your joints. Make sure that your neck, everything feels safe. Inhaling back to center. Exhaling and very slowly return the hand to the ground. Feel the blood rushing down it. You might feel energy moving in the arm. Gentle exhale to the front. Allow your head to sink, your neck to relax. And only stay as long as feels comfortable. You can arrange your arms ahead of you, get them out of the way so that you can sink, or prop them up if you need a little bit of support. Let your face get very soft, your eyes very heavy. Make sure that your knees and your ankles feel safe, and any time you want you can roll out, 
one vertebra at a time, rolling the shoulders back and pressing the crown of the head up towards the ceiling. Left hand to right knee, the other hand swinging behind you, fingers pointing back, and exhaling into the twist. Feeling that beautiful ringing action through the midsection, massaging your internal organs, stretching them. Nice long inhales through the spine. Try not to slump back or be too heavy on the hand behind you. And again, if you like, you can press the hand against the knee to take you deeper. Try to keep the shoulders and the neck relaxed, chin in neutral, and make sure that your knees, your ankles, and your hips are completely comfortable. You can always open the feet or extend one leg if you need to. Inhaling back to the front, opening the arms, relaxing the shoulders, exhaling, hands back down behind you, rolling the shoulders down. Hmm. Going into this side stretch on the other side, inhale, right arm up, reach the fingers up, exhaling over. And again, adjust your head for comfort, looking up if the, your neck can deal with that. But if it feels pinchy or aching or not right for you, turn your head to the front or look straight down. Try to relax your shoulders. Press down through that opposite hip. Don't rock over. Try to relax the bottom elbow and shoulder, breathing into it, inhaling up. Lengthen the spine and exhale Float the hand back down to the ground with control, rolling the shoulders back. Hands behind you, fingers pointing straight back or towards the buttocks, squeezing the shoulder blades together, opening the heart. You can lengthen through the neck if it feels okay on your neck, but if there's any discomfort, drop your chin down towards your Adam's apple and just concentrate on arching the rest of the spine. Inhaling back to the front, releasing the legs, Shaking out the legs as is necessary. And then if you're comfortable with it, you can try butterfly. Soles of the feet together, exhaling forwards here. So the hips are wider now. If it's not comfortable, cross your legs again, one foot in front of the other. Or you can have your legs open with the soles of the feet on the floor and the knees bent. So relaxing down, deepening the breath into the back body, getting those lungs very big behind you. Gently walking your hands over to one side, stretching out over the left knee, gently sinking your head down, relaxing the shoulders. Don't squeeze your shoulders around your ears. Just breathe and feel the stretch down the lower right side of your body. Then walking slowly and carefully around in the other direction, thinking about almost hooking your rib cage over the knee. That's the direction you're moving in. And then softening. Be absolutely certain there's no pain in your ankles or your feet or your knees. If there is, you need to remove yourself from the posture. Settling down to the front, squeezing your tummy muscles in and either dragging or walking your hands in, depending on what's right for you. Bringing yourself back to a seated pose, palms pressing together, namaste mudra, sitting tall and straight. Make sure you're not lifting your chin, lengthening your spine, trying to let those knees sink down towards the floor and breathe. Enjoy the energy. Floating your hands back down, releasing your body, gently swiveling onto your left hip, extending the leg out to the side, Top leg bends, putting the ball of the foot on the floor, pressing into the hand to lift the hips, making sure that the sole of the supporting leg is turned into the floor and reaching up into a side balance. Be very sure that your wrist and shoulder feel safe here. You can look up, straight ahead or down, and sinking yourself down any time you need to. An easier variation is to come up onto the bottom knee and extend the top leg and reach up. So find the one that works for your body. Breathe into it. Think about pressing the ribs up towards the sky, adjusting your neck. Anytime you get tired, remember, you can turn your head into a more comfortable location. If the wrist starts to burn, if anything starts to feel not quite right, make sure to gently take yourself down. 
switching around into a plank pose, getting your body into a straight line, hands directly underneath the shoulders, and then pressing back into downward facing dog. Long spine, ears between the upper arms, bend the knees if you need to, allow the heels to sink down. Only a pelvis width between the feet is necessary, and you can walk your dog, bending one knee, dropping the opposite heel, breathing into it. Don't hold your breath, whatever you do. Try to make sure that your middle fingers are parallel in the hands, your heels are hiding behind your feet, and make sure that you're breathing nice and deep in and out through the nose if you can manage, squeezing the tummy muscles in on the exhales, pressing the crown of the head towards the hands. Returning to plank, then half plank, knees on the floor, which is a gentler variation, unhooking the toes, gently coming into knees, chin, chest. So chin comes down, chest comes down, planting the hands on the floor, being very careful of the lower back. If there's any pinching whatsoever, you can just press into your hands and release yourself either by scooting back or forwards. The gentle caterpillar action down onto the tummy, unhooking the feet, bringing the legs together, big toes touch, hands sweep down by the hips and rocking the legs nice and close together. You can have your chin or your forehead on the floor. On the inhale, lifting the face and the heart forwards, rolling the shoulders back and down. Any pain in the lower back whatsoever, take yourself down out of this cobra variation and arch your back. More advanced is to lift your hands up off the floor using your entire spine to lift you up towards the sky. Make sure your neck feels safe here. Hands sweeping forwards. A gentler variation is the sphinx. Checking your distance by measuring your fist into the inner elbow. Breathing. Forearms are parallel, middle fingers parallel. Long neck gazing calmly into the distance or closing your eyes if that's more comfortable for you. Again, any discomfort in the lower back, walk your elbows out to the sides, gently pile your hands, turn one knee out to the side into crocodile. The knee turning outward is a way to release the spine subtly from the back arch. If you need more, pushing yourself back into the child pose, buttocks to heels, head either on the piled hands or resting on the floor. Just taking a few moments to rest in crocodile. Straightening out the leg. Sliding the hands underneath the shoulders, pressing up into angry cat, arch the spine, and then sinking back into the child pose. Forehead on the floor or resting on the backs of your hands if there's any pinching in the neck. You can even pile the forehead on top of the fists. And if that's still uncomfortable, you can rest the forehead on the palms with the elbows underneath. So there's usually a variation that will suit you, but if your knees are burning or hurting at all, you shouldn't stay here either. Classical child, hands by the ankles, elbows bent well out to the sides, and just resting on the forehead. If you feel an urge to turn your head to one side, you need to put your hands under the forehead to release the neck a little bit. Slowly rolling out of child, pressing the sit bones to the heels, stacking one vertebra at a time, bringing yourself into an upright hero posture, rolling the shoulders back, and ensure that you're not swaying your lower back. If you press your tummy forward, try to squeeze it in and flatten the lower back somewhat, lengthening yourself vertically. Feeling your entire weight pressing down onto your feet, giving them a stretch. If it's uncomfortable, you need to take yourself out. Switching around, moving into that side balance on the other side. Again, slightly more advanced is to have the knee bent behind you, lifting up, and make sure that the back heel comes up off the floor onto the ball of the foot. There it is. Breathing, pressing up through the rib cage, adjusting your neck for comfort making sure you're not collapsing through that bottom shoulder. Your ear should not be resting on your shoulder. There should be space there, wide open across the heart. And then exhaling with a strong tummy, taking yourself into plank, then to downward facing dog. Ensure that your wrists feel safe. You can always roll up the end of the mat to pad them if you need a little bit of extra support. Don't let your head just flop here. 
The top of your head presses in the direction of your hands. You're trying to get a long, straight spine. And if that's difficult for you, put a little bend in the knees. That's fine. I'm always making sure you're working without pain. Breathing into it. Swinging yourself forwards into the plank or the half plank with the knees on the floor if that's better for you. Don't work yourself so hard you can't breathe. Chaturanga, straight line all the way down to the floor. If that doesn't work for you, lower yourself as best you can, bringing the legs together, either having the forehead or the chin on the floor, toes touch, heels opening and inhaling, lifting into a classical cobra. Low at first, you don't have to use the hands at all, just ensuring that the shoulders are relaxed and rolled back. There's no pain in your lower back. You're breathing, your face is quiet, and if you like, taking it higher, pressing into the arms, but leave a bend in the elbows. Try not to brace yourself up on the arms, closing the elbows towards your ribs instead of letting them swing open so that you look like a beautiful, graceful snake. Exhaling, taking yourself out anytime you need, slowly one vertebra at a time, pressing the chin forwards and then tucking under. Squeeze tummy, round your spine, angry cat, and sinking back again into your child pose, buttocks towards the heels, classical child, hands down by the ankles. But if you need hands under your forehead or fists piled one on top of the other, find a comfortable way to be. Moving into a yoga mudra, palms together, fingers interlock, squeezing the shoulder blades and the palms, inhaling to lift the hands away from the lower back. And if it feels good, you can rock it out, gently explore the range of motion. Try not to have too, too much pressure on your head. And if you like, you can actually roll right up onto your head, tucking the toes under. But try to keep the majority of your weight over your knees so you're not putting too much strain on the neck. Breathing into it, allowing the hands to gently fall away. And you can either return the hands to the lower back or leave them up and resist with the mudra, rolling yourself down. Breathing slowly. Don't release your hands until they reach your lower back. Then let the fingers go. Allow the hands to return back to the ground, soften the shoulders and the elbows, sinking into your child. Breathing, feeling the warmth the energy, the massage of your abdomen against your thighs. Reaching your arms forward, look up, spread out your fingers and back up into downward facing dog. Just briefly stepping your right foot through into a lunge. Now right away, make sure that your knee is safe by having that front shin straight up and down, squaring up your hips, taking the weight off your fingertips by lifting your chest up away from the knee. Really make sure that your foot, your heel is directly below the knee, and if it's easy for you, you can take yourself up a little higher, hands on the thigh. You want to have quite a nice deep split, but not so far it hurts, of course. If you want more work, the hands reaching up overhead. It's most advanced to have the arch in the back, leaning backwards, looking up. So find a level that you feel comfortable at. Please don't push yourself too hard. Find what feels good and right for your own body. Sweeping the hands back down, tucking back toe under, knee picks up. Stepping the foot in a little bit and tightrope walking the back arch of the foot behind you in line with the heel of the foot ahead of you. Rolling yourself up to standing, lengthening the spine, leaning out, and moving yourself into the triangle, trikonasana. And again, the neck, adjusting that for comfort, breathing into it. And you can see that you can have your legs fairly wide apart or closer together. Really pay attention to what feels right for you. It doesn't quite matter how far down the leg you get. You need to have that top shoulder rolled back, reaching up through the fingers, relaxing the shoulders, breathing into it, squeezing the tummy to inhale yourself out any time you need to. Relaxing the arms down, turning your feet to parallel, toes pointing forwards. Don't let your toes turn out. Hands on hips, inhale to arch the spine. Keep, keep your tummy tucked in, your tailbone tucked under. Exhaling forwards, 
just to the halfway point so your back is flat. You're looking straight down at the floor. You can leave the hands resting on the thighs or open them out to the sides like wings. Make sure you can see your thumbs out of the corners of your eyes. And breathe, pressing the crown of your head straight ahead of you and exhaling. If you want, you can take yourself deeper. Hands underneath your shoulders, breathing into your spine, press into the hands, lengthen the spine, look down at the floor, and then exhaling, allowing yourself to just dangle between your legs. Again, your middle fingers parallel, pointing straight ahead. And if you want to, you can widen your feet apart or narrow them closer together. Top of the head gently starting to move towards the floor, moving into the windmill. Inhaling up through the right hand, long spine. The hand should be directly below the face as you go into the twist so that your spine is straight. Exhaling to come out any time you want to. Slow breath down, switching hands. Fingers point towards the opposite foot, opening up through the left hand, reaching up. So if your arm doesn't make it all the way to vertical, that's okay. Just open as far as is comfortable. Remember, you can come down anytime you want. More advanced is to go into the wrap. Arm goes around behind you, takes a hold of the opposite thigh. That doesn't feel good. Just get it to whichever level feels right for you. Making sure you can breathe the whole way through and returning down anytime you want. If you need to come out, Healing and towing the feet closer together or all the way together if you need to. And you can hinge yourself back up to standing or walk your hands up your legs, bringing yourself into another nice prayer mudra. Toes open out to the sides, moving into Durga, the goddess. Knees open over the toes, keeping your tummy in, tailbone tucked under, relaxing the shoulders and breathing. Crown of the head presses towards the ceiling. If you want more, you can widen the feet apart or close them closer together. Full Durga, arms open out to the sides, a nice 90 degree angle at the elbows, palms face forwards. And make sure that you breathe deep into your tummy, power up that goddess. Going into the side stretch in Durga, gently putting the hand or the elbow onto the thigh and reaching out through the opposite arm, nice straight arm. Inhaling to take yourself out, exhaling to take yourself into the other side. Always making sure that you're staying connected to the breath. If it gets to be too much for you, you can straighten your legs anytime you need to. Exhaling, walking the feet a little closer together, heel and toe, right up into your mountain pose. This is prayer mountain, palms of the hands together, your feet are pelvis width apart. Tucking that tummy in, tailbone slightly under, relaxing the shoulders, making sure your chin is neutral, top of the head moves towards the ceiling. Inhaling, reaching up, exhaling, fold down, standing forward, fold, fingers next to the pinky toes, lengthen the spine. Let the top of the head sink down. Look out behind you through your legs to ensure the back of your neck is released. Nod your head yes, shake it no if necessary. Just breathing. Bend your knees as much as you need to to get your hands on the floor. Opening your feet out a little bit, coming down into a squat, turning your toes out to the side, elbows to knees, palms together. Again, the chin is in neutral, nice long spine. You can press the elbows against the knees, the knees against the elbows for a little resistance. And if the squat doesn't work for you, just sit down cross-legged again and rest with a tall straight back in that place. Nice deep breaths, opening up through the knees, the hips, the ankles. Don't worry if your heels don't make it to the floor. Some skeletons are just not designed to go there. Returning to butterfly or cross-legged if you prefer, or sitting any way that's comfortable for you. Long, tall back. Opening yourself back into downward facing dog, turning into it, stretching out, pressing your hands into the floor, stepping into the lunge on the other side. 
Again, your knee should be above your heel. More advanced is to have the back knee off the floor, but careful, only work to the level that feels good for you. If your knee stays on the floor and it's starting to get a little sore, put a block underneath it or a folded t-shirt or whatever you have handy. Stepping that back foot in a little bit, moving towards your triangle. Again, arch lines up behind the heel, leaning out, long spine, bottom hand descends to the shin, top hand reaching up, adjusting your neck for comfort, calm your facial muscles, breathe into it. If you're very stretchy, you might be able to touch the ground, move into a deeper variation with the arm alongside the ear, but again, if you can't keep that top shoulder back, you're losing the quality of the posture, so only go into it as far as works. Opening the feet, feet parallel, again that little back arch, squeezing the shoulder blades and the elbows behind you, and then gently sinking down into that feet apart forward fold. Adjusting the distance so that your ankles aren't burning, your knees are safe. And you can just walk your hands over to one ankle or to wherever you can comfortably reach on the leg and drawing the top of your head down towards the foot. Breathing into your spine, keeping your chin nice and tucked so the neck is long. Relaxing your face. No pain here. If there's any discomfort, please don't stay. Walking your hands to center, back over to the other side, lengthening here. If you start to get dizzy or uncomfortable, please take yourself out of the posture. Nice big breaths. Feel your back opening, the top of your head moving towards your foot. Returning to center if you need to, healing your toes and your heels back together. Stretching out in your standing forward fold. Release the back of the neck, nodding your head yes and no. You can go into the mudra here if you like. Palms together, fingers interlock. Squeezing the shoulder blades and the hands. Lengthening the arms away from the lower back. Gradually they move closer and closer towards the floor ahead of you. Don't forget the breath here. If you find that you're moving out of the forward fold, sacrificing it for the mudra, you might just choose to stay in the forward fold. Trying to get the top of the head sinking in the direction of the feet. Breathing into it. Hands returning to the back, then you release the fingers. Hands return to the floor and move, moving yourself back up into Tadasana. Big inhale up, or you can walk the hands up the legs. Breathing into your prayer. Nice long neck. You can look down at the feet and make sure that they're in alignment. I'm just breathing, getting those shoulders back, long spine, soft face, tucking that tailbone under a little bit, feeling the abdominal muscles as you breathe. Make sure that your weight is just in front of your heels. You're not rocked back on your heels or forwards on your toes. Your second toes should be parallel. Exhaling, releasing the arms down. One hand comes to the hip. Inhaling up through the right hand, reaching up. Exhaling into this half moon variation. Again, ensuring that your neck is comfortable. Top shoulder rolls back. Try not to rock over onto one foot. It's a little more advanced to have the hand sliding down the thigh, or you can leave the hand on the hip if you feel like you need that support. Big exhale down, big circle down, and a big inhale up, opening up through the ribs, reaching up, exhaling, returning that right hand down to the thigh, roll the shoulder back, switching sides, inhaling up through the left hand, reaching up, exhaling over. You can either leave the hand on the hip on the right side or slide it down the thigh. That's entirely up to your body and its levels of comfort. Breathing into it, try to roll the top shoulder back, then swinging down into a big circle, inhaling to lift yourself back up. Two hands up, breathing, palms together, sinking back down into that prayer mountain, thumbs to chest, chin sinks to neutral, shoulders relax, finding the alignment of hips over knees, knees over ankles,
shoulders over hips. Chin is neutral or even slightly tucked down. Breathing. Find the balance. Feel the energy and the warmth moving in your body. Try to relax anything that doesn't need to work here. Your spine grows tall with every inhale. Exhaling back down. You can dive your hands down. Settle yourself down. Extending out through your right leg. Tucking in the left leg or having that left leg in a more comfortable location. Left hand behind you. Fingers point straight back. Nice big inhale coming up on the knee. Rolling that top shoulder open. Palm faces the floor. And again, looking up or out to the side or down. You can press your pelvis forward. Don't sink your shoulder into your ear. Make sure there's a lot of space. If there's any discomfort in the wrist or the shoulder or the knee, please don't stay. Exhaling, opening up into it, feeling your heart open, your spine elongating, keeping the pelvis pressing forwards, trying not to collapse backwards, get the buttock away from the heel, relaxing your face and breathing into it. Only stay as long as feels right for you. You can swing yourself down anytime you like. Straightening your spine. Swinging the other hand behind you. You can counter twist here if that feels good for you. Turning the chin over the right shoulder. Feeling the entire length of the spine turning in the opposite direction from where it was before. One hand on either side of the knee, the bent knee, gently draping yourself down to the left side, letting your head sink down between your arms, just relaxing here, letting go, feeling the massage of the internal organs against the thigh, sliding the hands under the shoulders to inhale yourself out, a nice big swan Taking the right foot, hooking it over the left knee. The left knee points straight ahead, trying to get the hip down on that side. So if you can't, you can straighten out the bottom leg as it is here. Putting the hand behind you on the right side, holding the knee with the left hand, inhaling to lengthen. If you want to be deeper, you can bend that bottom leg, swinging that left heel in towards your right buttock. Inhale to reach up. Exhale to cross the elbow over the knee. Left elbow over right knee. Inhale. Lengthen. Exhale. Twisting back to the right side. You can leave the hand up or rest it on the hip. Breathing into it. Softening your shoulders and your face. And you can use the leverage of the elbow against the knee to turn yourself a little deeper on the exhales, but not so far that you can't breathe. Shaking out the legs and opening out on the left side, tucking in the right foot, right hand behind you, inhaling open, press the pelvis forwards, getting that buttock away from the heel, Again, making sure that your neck is comfortable. Palm faces the floor on the top hand. Shoulder is rolled open. Making sure that the bottom shoulder, the supporting arm, is not crushing against your bottom ear. The fingers should be pointing straight back. Anytime you need to come out, you can exhale down. If you feel like you want to stay longer in the postures, by all means, that's entirely up to you. It's your practice. Going into a little counter twist. Right hand on left thigh, the other hand swings behind you. Just releasing the spine, turning the head. Softening that chin down a little bit, nice long neck. Breathing. Inhaling to open to the other side. One hand on either side of the knee. Draping yourself down, getting the arms out of the way. Or supporting yourself on the elbows if you need to. That knee should feel comfortable. You can feel the gentle massage of belly on thigh. If the extended leg is not comfortable, you can always bend the extended leg, move it to a more comfortable location. 
Hands under shoulders, squeeze tummy, inhale, swan your heart forwards and up. Moving into the twist, left foot on the other side of the right knee. Again, you can have that right leg straight or the heel tucked back against the left hip. Find the variation that works for you so the left hip is down and the hips are square. Fingers point straight back on that left hand, right hand reaching up, and then elbow moves across. If you can't get the elbow across, just hold the knee. That's fine. Inhale to lengthen through your spine. Exhale to twist back. Again, you can use the leverage of elbow against knee. Turning your eyes into the twist right around in the sockets. Your chin towards the shoulder. The left shoulder moving back. Your upper spine is twisting. Your mid spine, your lower spine. Breathing. Don't go so far that you squeeze the breath out of yourself like an anaconda. You must be able to get that in-breath. Relaxing even as you expand into it. Exhaling your way out. Gently removing that bent leg, shaking out your legs as is needed. And turning to take yourself gently down into the boat. Leaning back on your two sit bones, relaxing the shoulders, chin is neutral. If you want to, you can remain holding the knees or reach the hands out, putting your oars in the water, palms shoulder width apart, facing each other. And then just gently rolling yourself down, chin into the chest so you don't whack your head on the floor. Hands on the knees, rock your knees from side to side. You can let your head turn with the knees or in the opposite direction of the knees. Feel the kidneys massaging on the floor, your spine. Relaxing here. And then gently squeezing the tummy, exhaling the forehead up towards the knees. Relax your shoulders. Your head should be upright. If you can't keep your head upright, Interlink the fingers around the round part of your skull. Squeeze the elbows together. And any time you need to come down from this abdominal work, just gently exhale yourself back down. Hands to the knees. Opening your arms in a big letter T. Relax and spread the shoulders. Nice long neck. Exhaling the knees over to the left side. And adjusting the height of the knees. If they're quite high up, you can put the hand on the knees. But if this is pinchy on your lower back, and if the opposite shoulder on the right side is hoisting off the floor, you might want to adjust the height of the knees, move them down away from your chest. Gently turning your head into the twist here. You're looking at those extended right fingers, feeling that diagonal opening. Your right shoulder presses down, your knees are pressing down to the left, and your whole spine is just supported, twisting, opening. Again, there should be no discomfort here. If there is, you need to gently move the knees down away from you. To come out, you open the arms, you look back to the ceiling, you squeeze your tummy in, you bring the knees to center, and you can just unwind your spine here, turning your knees in circles, like you're stirring a big pot of soup. And then again, opening the arms, exhaling into the twist on the other side. Hand comes to the knee, making sure that your hand is not too high up. Your hands should basically be straight across at heart and shoulder level, not higher. You put too much strain into the shoulder. Closing the eyes if that's comfortable for you. Adjusting the height of the knees so that there's no discomfort across your sacrum, the lower end of the spine. You can feel the stretch through the buttock, the thigh, into your lower back, across the rib cage, right up into your shoulder perhaps. Everybody has a different sensation going into the postures, the asanas. So getting to know your own body, its own limits. Turning your head back to center, arms outstretched, inhaling the knees back, and again, you can stir that big pot of soup in one direction and the other if you like. 
gently releasing the back and quietly sinking the feet to the floor, hands beside the hips, nice long neck, heels moving towards your buttocks, toes are parallel, shins should be pretty close to straight up and down, inhaling and rolling yourself up into your spinal lift. So one vertebra at a time, curling away from the floor. And again, if you like, you can go into the mudra here, but the arms need to be able to rest on the floor. If they don't make it, don't do it. More advanced is to lift the heels, walk the toes a little bit closer in, but if that's causing you any kind of concern, don't go there. Walk the toes back out, lower the heels back down. It's very important not to let your knees sag out here. Your knees should be holding an invisible ball, both pointing straight up towards the ceiling. If you let your knees sag out, then you are risking your ligaments. Nice breath. Squeezing your tummy in, tucking your tailbone under, even in this place. Releasing the mudra. Feet move forward, heels under the knees. Widen your shoulders apart after the mudra. And gently rolling your spine, one vertebra at a time. Keeping that tailbone tucking under here, so your buttocks are going to be the very last thing to touch down on the floor. Try to get the lower spine down, then the buttocks, relaxing, making sure that your neck stayed long throughout that posture, drawing the knees in. Spinal lift is a back bend. You always want to follow a back bend with a forward fold, which we accomplish here, drawing the knees into the heart, rocking out the back. Hands behind the knees if that's more comfortable for you. Swing the feet up and rocking yourself back and forth. Only if this feels good, making sure your chin stays tucked so you're not hitting your head on the floor. And you can push yourself all the way up into standing forward fold from that. Takes a little practice. If you don't quite do it gracefully the first time, it just takes a few practices before your body starts to unwind. Standing forward fold. Again, if you want, you can hold the elbows. Use the weight of the arms and the head to help draw you down. You can bend the knees if you need to to get the face closer to the legs or even holding the elbows behind the legs if your forehead is lower than your knees. Breathing. Any variation that feels good. A very advanced way out is to reach the arms forward and hinge yourself up. You need a strong back for that one. Exhaling down into your prayer mountain. Relax your shoulders. Square up your feet. Squeeze that tummy in. You can let your chin sink down a little bit so you're regarding your fingertips. Breathing. Feeling the crown of the head lengthening away from the feet. Relaxing your face. Preparing for the tree. Squeeze tummy and tuck tailbone under. Inhale, lift your knee and your arms. Turning the palms to the ceiling. Left knee out to the side. Inhale, hands reaching up, palms together, but relax your shoulders. Your chin is neutral finding your balance. If it's too difficult, you can have the ball of the foot resting on the floor. Exhale to prayer, soften your shoulders, breathing regularly here, squeezing your tummy muscles in, point the hands forward. Exhale and inhale to open. Exhale, the hands float down, the leg floats down. Just release yourself, feel a work in that standing leg, and then switching sides. Inhale, knee up. Exhale, knee out. Have the foot at a comfortable height. Inhale, those hands up overhead. Try to keep your hips square, your chin in neutral, your shoulders relaxed. Exhale, pressing the hands down to heart level, thumbs into the sternum. Keep that tummy strong. Fixing your gaze on the floor helps your balance. Exhale, dive your arms straight forward. Inhale to open. And exhaling everything down to the floor. Relax the shoulders. 
feeling into your body, noticing the effects of the practice. And gently bringing yourself down into Shavasana. Just totally releasing every muscle. Some space between your feet. Palms facing up, or you can have your hands on your tummy, relaxing your face. Nice long spine, shoulders wide apart. Lower back snuggling into the ground. Just breathe your beautiful body. Relaxing your ankles. The entire feet are relaxed, sinking down into the floor. I feel into my calves and my shins. My lower legs are relaxing and sinking down into the floor. I feel into my knees. My knees are relaxing. My knees are melting down into the ground. I feel into my thighs. My thighs are relaxing. My thighs are relaxing down into the ground. I feel into my hips. My hips are relaxing. My hips are growing soft, melting down into the ground. I feel into my buttocks. My buttocks are relaxing. My buttocks are growing soft. They are melting down into the ground. I feel into my stomach. My stomach is relaxing. It's letting go of tension, melting down into the ground. I feel into my lower back. My lower back is relaxing. It's letting go of tension and melting down into the ground. I feel into my chest. My chest is relaxing. My chest is opening to love, giving and receiving. My chest is letting go of tension. It's melting down into the ground. I feel into my mid-back, my upper back, my whole back is relaxing. My spine is growing long and soft. My back body is melting down into the ground. I feel into my shoulder blades, my shoulders. My shoulders are relaxing. My shoulders are growing soft. They're letting go of tension. They're sinking down into the ground. I feel into my arms, my hands, my fingers. And my arms are relaxing. My arms, my hands, my fingers are growing soft, releasing tension. They're sinking down into the ground. I feel into my neck. My neck is relaxing. My throat, the sides of my neck, the back of my neck are soft and safe and sinking down into the ground. I feel into my jaw. My jaw is relaxing. 
My tongue is growing heavy in my mouth. The muscles of my lips are softening. My jaw and mouth let go of tension. They sink down into the ground. I feel into the muscles of my face, across my nose and cheekbones, on my forehead. My face is relaxing. My face is letting go of tension. It's sinking down into the ground. I feel into my eyes, my eye sockets, and they're both relaxing. The tiny muscles behind the eyes are letting go of tension. My eyes are very heavy, sinking down into the ground. I feel into my ears, my scalp, my ears and scalp are relaxing. The muscles are growing soft. The tension is running down into the ground. My entire beautiful body is now relaxed. Returning your mind back to the breath, feeling down into your hands and feet, wriggling your fingers and your toes. Let your head turn from side to side, pressing that cheekbone down towards the floor, lengthening the neck. Hmm, holding the elbows, reaching your arms above your head, Interlock the fingers, press the palms away from you, the heels away from you. Sink down through your lower back, a big inhale and exhale. Gently bending your knees, rocking them from side to side like windshield wipers. Letting your head continue to turn, releasing your neck. Drawing one knee into your chest. Hands behind the knees, stretch out the leg, basically moving any way that feels good for you right now. Listen to your body, see what it wants. Hmm. You can rock out your back again on the floor, massage those kidneys and the spine. If you feel like you need to pick up your head and stretch the back of your neck, you can do so. Basically, if you want to curl yourself up in a little ball or twist, listen inside. Listen to the messages of the body. And when you feel complete, gently bring yourself back up to sitting. Take your time. Arrange your legs for comfort. Resting the backs of the hands on the knees. You can put your hands into Yanana Mudra. A little energy circuit posture for the hands. Four fingers touch thumb. Lengthen that spine. Neutralize the back of the neck. Breathe. And just feel the effects of the asanas, the postures on your body. Bringing your hands back to prayer. Dropping your chin down a little bit. Relaxing that face. Namaste.